If I asked you how you'd get someone to do something, you'd likely say you'd communicate with them. But if I asked how you'd communicate, you'd say, I'd speak to them in English. So when we're dealing with a computer, what language do we use? Exactly, programming languages. These languages were developed to help in creating websites, apps, and even operating systems. But how did we create the first program before having any programming language? In 1815, the English child Augusta Ada Byron was born, later known as Ada Lovelace. Her father was one of the most famous poets of the Romantic period, known as Lord Byron. As she grew, she proved to herself and everyone around her that she was a unique person. Her passion for mathematics was limitless, and she learned from many scientists, quickly mastering mathematics with very few mistakes. One of the scientists she was inspired by is Charles Babbage. Charles created the first defiance machine. This was designed to automatically compute polynomial functions and was more of a calculator. But the difference was that this machine didn't run on stones or solar energy. It was a mechanical engine, a series of moving parts, much like a car engine. Unfortunately, the machine was never completed because the metalworking technology of the time wasn't advanced enough to produce the required precision in the parts. Moreover, the machine needed 25,000 parts, which was an extremely expensive cost, and the British government wasn't willing to fund it. They also doubted that the invention would even succeed, so they stopped funding before the project was finished. Despite this, Charles didn't give up. He began working on a similar machine with improvements, called the analytical engine. Here, when Ada Lovelace developed a set of instructions for the machine to calculate Bernoulli numbers, which can be seen as an early algorithm. While this is a significant achievement in the context of programming, it doesn't encompass all methods for solving mathematical equations. Her focus was on the potential of machines to carry out more complex structured tasks beyond simple calculations. It would have been a revolutionary achievement. Unfortunately, the invention wasn't completed in Babbage's time. However, the knowledge gained from these early attempts wasn't wasted Scientists built upon this knowledge, developing the programming languages that would allow us to use computers effectively. Fast forward to the 1990s and with the advent of computers, we needed programming languages to use them effectively. This is where programming languages came into play, and at first, they were similar to machine language, which made them very complex. You might wonder, what exactly is machine language? The idea is quite simple. Computers cannot process letters and numbers in the same way humans can. Computers process information in binary or base 2, which consists of only two numbers, 0 and 1. These two numbers, when arranged in specific patterns, represent letters or numbers that the computer can understand. As shown in the example, each number and letter corresponds to a binary code. In programming languages at that time, writing a single command required a very long sequence of ones and zeros. And since we need to write multiple commands, sometimes thousands of lines of code, the time it took to do this was immense. Furthermore, if you made a mistake by typing even one incorrect command, it would be hard to find the error. That's why the second generation of programming languages was developed, assembly language. In 1949, assembly language was introduced with the main purpose of simplifying machine language. In assembly language, we no longer had to write the command in binary, but instead used regular letters. Once the code was written, an assembler would translate it back into machine code, which the processor could understand. Despite this huge advancement, there were still drawbacks. For example, if the commands were too long, they would require a lot of memory to be processed. Additionally, while assembly language was easier than machine language, it was still hard to understand and maintain. The biggest limitation of assembly language was that programs written in this language could only run on the specific type of processor they were designed for. A program developed for Windows, for example, wouldn't run on a program developed for iOS on an iPhone because each processor understands commands differently. As a result, the third generation of programming languages appeared in 1957, 
introducing Fortran as the first high-level programming language. The goal of these languages was to make programming more accessible, reducing the difficulty programmers faced when using the previous generations of languages. This was achieved by simplifying the syntax so that it was easier for humans to read and understand. For example, instructions that would have taken eight lines to write an assembly language could now be written in just three commands in Fortran or Java. The key feature of these languages was that they were portable. Programs could be used on different systems without having to rewrite everything from scratch, unlike assembly language. Now, computers understood a language closer to human language. This was made possible by a tool called the compiler, which translated the code from high-level languages to assembly language, and then an assembler translated it into machine code. These two steps made the execution of programs slower because of the time it took for the computer to process these translations. But even with that, the third generation of languages marked a huge leap in the world of programming. Languages from the third generation were considered procedural languages, meaning they followed strict instructions on how tasks should be performed. The commands weren't simply instructions for what the program should do, but also how it should do it. This is where the fourth generation of programming languages came in, which eliminated this requirement. In the fourth generation, programmers only needed to specify what the program should do, not how to do it. The languages from this generation were far more efficient and required only about 10% of the code that was needed in the third generation to achieve the same results. And that's it for this topic. If you've made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to give us a like before you go so we can see how many of you stayed till the end. Also, if you have any questions,